Okay guys, this is how the Maul Saber starts out. We have just raw 3D printed pieces here. Now before we do get started, I want to mention that I do sell this print in my shop online. I designed and made free these files online, so I'll be sure to include a link to them as well in the description. So check that out if you want to complete this project on your own and if you like supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. So the Maul Saber is a bit unique in that it has two emitter ends connected to the main body. It also has uh, pieces of old uh, Inquisitor lightsabers. So it's quite a unique saber. So some of the materials that we have. I've got some clippers just to make sure that the pieces all fit together. We've got some cyanoacrylate super glue. This stuff bonds pretty quickly, so we're going to use that in conjunction with E6000, which is a much stronger glue, but takes a lot longer to fully cure. We're gonna use those two together to make sure our print stays together as it's curing. We've also got sandpaper glued to a flat wooden board. We're going to use this on some of the edges. Since this saber doesn't have interlocking pieces, we're going to need to make sure that the edges between the pieces are flush and will bind well with our glue. So, the first thing we're going to want to do is sand all the edges to the saber, both of the emitters and then both sides of the main body here. So, just take your piece and run it flat along your sandpaper board. This is going to make sure that your pieces fit very closely together. It's also going to help our super glue here bond a lot faster. Okay, now that we have all the pieces we need sanded, let's start applying our glue. I'm going to apply a small dab of E6000 along the inside of each end. And then we're going to use super glue along the outer edge. So just bring your pieces together and you're going to want to hold it for probably 30 seconds as that super glue fully cures. Applying a bit of pressure does help it cure faster. Okay, that feels like it's on there pretty well. Now we're going to do the same with the other side. Okay, now that we have our main body assembled, we can start putting in the little accessory pieces. Now there are grooves cut out of this top piece, so these should slide in and fit together pretty well. But we have the cutters here just in case we need to make, like clip off the edges to these small pieces. Um, we're going to apply just a little bit of super glue because these pieces should friction fit together pretty well, but we'll add a little bit of glue anyway. Okay, I am going to cut off the bottom, the bottom corner of this guy just to help him slide in a little bit fast or a little bit easier. Okay, there's one claw down. Now let's do the same to the other side. Okay, great. We got both claws in. Now all that we have left is this uh, little ring piece. So for this, we're definitely going to want to apply a bit of super glue since the friction fit isn't as uh, close as the claw pieces. And this piece will just slide right in. There we go. We have got a fully assembled Maul lightsaber. I like it. So now, like I said, we're gonna wait around 24 hours to the, for the glue to fully cure and for this piece to be real solid. Before our next step, which is gonna be smoothing and sanding some of these 3D printer lines. It's not exactly necessary, but it'll make our paint job a lot smoother and a lot better. So, that'll be the next step. Let's get to it. In order to fill in some of the 3D printer lines, we're going to be using a Rust-Oleum filler primer. The stuff comes out like a kind of really thick spray paint, and it's going to really fill in some of those 3D printer lines for us. You're going to want some uh, lung protection as well as gloves. Now my kind of strategy for this is to apply it pretty closely. If it runs or drips, that's okay, because we're going to be sanding it all the way anyway. 
I typically do two to three coats waiting about 20, 20 minutes in between each coat and then giving it like a full 24 hours before I start sanding to really give it the time it needs to cure. You want to be sure and get into all the crevices of your saber so that you don't have any 3D printer lines showing. Once we sand this out, it's going to really smooth out the whole thing and make it look a lot nice, or make it look really nice. So with our filler primer fully cured, we can start sanding. I like to start out with kind of a medium grit, 150, uh, to really start things off and then move up to a 300 grit to really smooth things out. For this part, you're gonna to want to keep on your lung protection as this does create a lot of dust and particles. You probably want a microfiber cloth as well. So just take a little bit of 150 grit sandpaper and start sanding away. After you've sanded a bit, just wipe off the dust and when you feel comfortable, move on to the 300 grit sandpaper. You can kind of see me doing some twisting motion with the sandpaper to really get those cylinders really smoothed down. I found that's a good way to do it. It's very effective. But you also want to get to all the little spaces inside. So that's why I like to do it with a small handheld piece of sandpaper instead of like a machine or something. So once you have it sanded down to a pretty good smoothness, we are going to grab some black spray paint and paint this whole thing with it. The black spray paint is going to act as our base for our next step, which is going to be painting it silver. So just do one or two very light coats. You don't want to have any runs or streaks in this paint, so take it kind of slow. If you do create runs, all you have to do is wait for the paint to dry and then sand it again. Do the 150 grit and then back to the 300 grit and then paint over it again. Once we have our nice black base coat, we can move on. Now that we've got our black base saber, we can get to the fun part, which is going to be painting. You're going to need a few items, gloves for one, some paper towels, and whatever color you're going to be painting the saber. In my case, I'm going to be using metallic aluminum. Now the premise to this painting method is that we will take a piece of, uh, we'll take a piece of paper towels, spray a little bit of the spray paint on a corner, and while that paint is still wet, we will gently wipe it over the saber. What this is going to do is it's going to paint the tall parts or the high parts of the lightsaber the metallic silver that we're using. But it's going to leave the low parts of the saber black. What this does is gives it a nice kind of uh, rustic or worn down look because it has all those recessed black areas. It makes it look like it's dirty or it's worn down from the original metal shine. This technique is pretty easy but also easy to mess up. If you press too hard you can accidentally paint some of the recessed areas and it might not look as good. It, if that's the case just grab a paintbrush and some black acrylic paint and you can cover over the silver pieces that you don't want. Uh, very shortly after you wipe down for the first time you will or the paint on your paper towel will start to dry. Uh, it's usually best just to quit early before your paper towel starts to uh, kind of wad up and just fall apart on you. So in that case just move to a new section of the paper towel. It's easy as that. Well, there you go, guys. There is our mall saber. It's got a few places I can touch up, but that's not a big deal. It looks nice, metallic, and kind of worn down. 
So I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope that you try this out on your own. It's a fun little DIY project and you get a cool looking lightsaber out of the deal. Again, check out the link in the description if you want the 3D printed parts for yourself. Otherwise, a link to the files is also in the description if you own a 3D printer. Again, thanks for watching guys. I hope to see you again in the next video.